too. Twenty years later. (sighs) (sighs) (coughs) I jump awake in my New York apartment, coughing from a childhood nightmare. Overheated, dry mouth, beads of sweat accumulate across my hairline. Don't know why my subconscious has been stirring up old memories lately, if they even happened at all. I've grown to accept that I was a boy of a rich fantasy life that may have gotten the best of him on a stormy night. Encircled by cheap particle board furniture and bare gray walls, the lack of luxury pacifies my mild anxiety attack. There's no mistaking this place for Grayson Manor. Unable to fall back to sleep with trash collectors outside, banging metal garbage cans against the curb, stray dogs barking, city streetlights piercing through the window blinds. I had grown accustomed to these nightly nuisances since college, abandoning my country roots. I even try to minimize my accent, but the southern drawl slips out near the end of lengthy conversations, prompting customers to ask, Where I originated from. What brought me here? Neither question is ever answered honestly. Keeping it short and boring. And if for whatever reason they continue to pry about my past, I find a way to make them feel uncomfortable as they're making me. I launch into my morning routine two hours sooner than normal. Shower, shave. Stretch my eyelids to insert contacts, then casually roam in a towel, brushing my teeth, business as usual, until I see her sitting on the edge of the bed. Weird, because I went to bed alone, and I woke up the same way. Grandma? You have to come back. Honestly, I wasn't sure who she was at first, but those wide ocean blue eyes are unforgettable. It has to be her. She's been frozen in my memories as a 40-something-year-old woman with platinum blonde hair and the grace of a beauty queen. Vibrant and wrinkle-free. Sorry, my brain is still processing her aged appearance. Time has caught up with her, but her elegance is fully intact. I politely excuse myself to spit into the bathroom sink and rinse my toothbrush. This sudden surprise visit after years of silence has thrown me into shock. This must be earth shatteringly important. What? Why didn't you just call? Something happened to Mom? Dad? How did you get in? I couldn't shut up long enough to let her give me a simple response. One of my guesses is going to cause an honest micro-reaction. A twitch of some kind to reveal the main reason and avoid the small talk. Grandma smiles at me, admiring the decent man I've become in spite of the family cutting me off over a decade ago. She rises and places her arthritic, brittle hands on my face. If I had known, I could have saved you. Save me from what? Did she discover that I was falsely banished? Or did I do something so horrible they're finally over it? Don't let her go. Let who leave? You're not making any sense, Grandma. Do they know you're here? Am I witnessing an episode of dementia? My cell phone rings before I can get a coherent explanation from her, breaking the confusing tension between us. I answer the phone to my mother, hoping she can clarify this nonsense. Mom, slow down. What happened? Between her tears and sobbing, incomplete words, she informs me that my grandmother has passed away in her sleep. Pretty crazy, because she's standing right here beside me, looking very much alive. I don't tell her that. I let my mom babble on about being legally required by the state lawyer to invite me to the burial. Wow! How far is she going to take this elaborate joke? I use my thumb to cover my cell phone mic when Grandma squeezes my elbow. You have to go. Why? 
Why is she lying to me? She's not. Grandma says before her spirit fades away right in front of me. I almost dropped my phone, but end up putting my mother at ease by agreeing to attend the funeral. Had I refused, the will would have remained sealed for one whole calendar year from the day my grandmother was declared dead. I was tempted to laugh and tell them all to go to hell, but she had just lost her mother, and I was more afraid Grandma would return to haunt me. I was distracted at work by the concept of going back to Shelbyville. My co-workers could see something was wrong, but I didn't want to go into it. Being disowned stereotypes you as a bad apple. They might assume you're a relentless leech, a criminal, or an addict. I'm none of those. It's hard for anyone to fathom I did nothing wrong to be sent away to foreign boarding schools. Denied phone privileges to home. Letters I wrote to my parents were returned, and an advocate was sent to escort me to my next venture until my education was complete. To move on, I lied to everyone by claiming to be an only child, and that my parents are dead. Worked weekends and holidays, alleging I had no family to celebrate with. Basically true. So it came as a bit of a shock at the Metropolitan Museum when I requested a week off for a death in the family. The conservator restorer, Crystal Finelli, is a co-worker I had dated for seven months. Sweet, and shares my passion for fine arts. She could have been the one, but I wasn't so guarded about my true identity. I envy her family's closeness, but knew if I'd ever confided the truth to her. She would have tried to reunite me with mine, so I let her go to avoid that drama. Yeah, we've remained close friends ever since. When word got out that I was taking time off, she invited me to get cheese fries at a diner after work. A little run-down place across the street from the museum. We ordered a large plate to share and two colas. Crystal stares at me awkwardly, hands folded on the table lips tucked in, and wide, cartoony eyes. How was your day? I ask, putting the ball in her court to take the lead in our conversation. Dull. Still working on that Madonna piece you acquired from Germany. So, who died? Straight to the point. What I like most about her. I wait for the waitress to set our drinks down and walk away. My grandmother. Oh, I'm sorry. It surprises her. She thought I had made up a phony relative to avoid getting a strike on my employee record and built up some wild vision of me venturing off to Vegas or Comic-Con without giving her a hint of my devious plan. She makes me sound more exciting than I really am. Were you too close? Yeah, when I was very young, um... So I'm guessing the nursing home wants you to claim her body or something? You're probably her only next to kin besides a cousin or two, right? She fishes for more information about a life I had kept secret from her. I swirl my soda ice with a straw. Have you ever heard of the Grayson Gallery of Fine Arts in St. Louis? Of course. She rolls her eyes one of the many institutes she had sent a resume to for employment. It was founded by a woman in the 1980s, named Laura Davidson. Okay. I didn't come here to discuss what you read off the pamphlet. Stop changing the subject. Do you want me to go with you? I have time to put in a request. You shouldn't do this alone. Our waitress sets the fries down in the middle of our history lesson. Crystal swipes the first crisp fry before the melted cheese has a chance to sog them. The heiress, Laura Davison, is my grandmother. I divulge, taking a messy bite. Crystal wipes the cheese off the corner of my mouth with her thumb. What? I finally pulled the band-aid off an old wound. I won't be alone. Both my parents, my sister, family, friends, local celebrities will be there. 
It's going to be a circus of tears. You'll probably see me in the caption on the news. You said your parents died in a car crash. I leaned back against the booth, presenting a serious look. It's important that she understands there's no pending punchline at the end of this confession. People stop asking about your family when you, you tell them they're dead. They don't know whether you're over there or not. Seems rude to ask if you are. Jeez, Justin. I didn't think I was just anyone to you. We were practically living together. I wanted to marry you. Is this the reason why you pushed me away? Because you didn't want me to find out? Yes. I'm a stupid jerk. You don't have to point that out. I made choices to ward away gold diggers. Money changes people. Set for life kind of money ruins good intentional people like Crystal. When I said earlier that she would have tried to reunite me with my family because she came from a good one, it wasn't made clear that I believe... She could have seceded. That's how special she is. Things could have turned out so differently if you had told me sooner. I'm breaking her heart all over again. I reach for her hand, eager to confess I still love her. Ready to bear my soul if it could rekindle our relationship. She slides her hand off the table. I'm pregnant. Just found out a few days ago. I haven't told my boyfriend if you want to call him that. It doesn't feel quite real yet, if you know what I mean. I've been thinking of all the things I'm going to miss out on. Congratulations. Is the only thing I could spit out. I withdrew my hand agreeing that our opportunity for a second chance does not exist. I think she was expecting more from me. Just like that, the rug was pulled out from under our love story. Crystal stands up and walks over to my side of the table. I couldn't look at her. She kisses my cheek, but I don't budge. I don't know how to react. It was good to feel her lips on me again, and extremely sad at the same time. We don't normally end our buddy dates with kisses. Did our friendship just end? I'm not sure she wants me to run after her by the way she lingers in the parking lot. I pretend not to notice, keeping her in my peripheral view as I finish my fries. I wait for her to drive away before I pay. Leaving for a while doesn't look so bad right now. <laughs>